scanning noises. Hi, this is what we are going to be making today. I am calling it a glitch effect because I don't know what else to call it. It's exciting in thinking about scenarios where this specific effect could work, but today I'm gonna show off how to build this effect and also some really cool and powerful tools inside Fusion that make it all possible. Okay, I'm gonna pause that and drag a fresh copy of our clip down to the timeline. As long as my playhead is over that clip, I can click this button to open the Fusion page. Now, I originally discovered this effect a while ago when I was playing in Fusion and just running through a bunch of random nodes and seeing what they did, messing around. And I discovered the wand node. I pulled up this search bar, by the way, by pressing shift space, then you can just type in uh, any node if you know what you want. This is one, I'm gonna click add and position it over here by my media in. And if I take the square output of this media in and pipe it into the yellow input, then I can preview that wand on a second viewer here. I toggle and put in one into here and I'm gonna pull up media in in my first viewer. Now I'm previewing my wand here. And if I select that, I will have this little selection point. And when I start to drag this around the scene, you might start to realize what is happening, especially if you compare it to our footage on the left. The wand node, sort of like a magic wand tool in Photoshop or somewhere else, is looking at what's selected and trying to find the natural bounds of that shape or that color or just how it's being used in the scene. You see if I come over to this billboard, it selects almost the entire thing. And over here in the inspector for the wand, we do have several controls. Importantly, this range and range soft edge because we never really want too much selected at one time. So I'm gonna pull down this range a little bit and pull up this range soft edge. And then that should be a good mix a little bit. We still get big flashes, but that'll be okay if it's if it comes in chunks. Now I've been manually moving around this selection point, but that is controlled over here in the inspector as well under selection point. And I'm actually gonna right click on that, go to modify with perturb. And now if we scroll through this footage, you'll see this green dot is flying around our scene and selecting different parts of that scene uh, that are coming through this wand mask. And that's interesting. This wand node is outputting this black and white image and that is mask data. When you plug this into the mask input of an effect, it will look at the white area and that will be the part of the screen uh, that gets the effect applied to it. And we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna create a color corrector node, not have that connected to the wand at first, but I'm gonna drag that between the media in and the media out and I'm gonna hold shift so I can just drop that right on that connection. Then I will pull up that corrector on node two and that wand on node one. Now I'm gonna come into this color corrector and I am going to really mess up these controls. We want things to be bright and garish. I'm gonna crank up this saturation, pull down the contrast just a hair, gain just a bit as well. We want things bright and colorful. I might crank up the saturation even more. Yeah, that's pretty extreme. You see, if we move this hue around, we get all these different bright colors. But I'm gonna right click on the hue, go to modify with. I'm actually gonna click uh, perturb this time. And as we start to skim through our scene, you'll get these big color shifts. It'll be blue, then green, then red, and all of this really vibrant as well. But now watch this. I'm gonna go back to my wand and actually pull up this range of hair and find a good spot where lots of selected. Okay, maybe not that much. This is good. We have a big part of the arm and the VR as well. I'm gonna take the output of the wand and plug it into this blue mask input of the color corrector. And there you'll see the white parts of this mask image now are the only parts of our original source where that color change is coming through. And once it's on top of each other, you can really dive back into the color corrector and start to crank things so that's really visible. Especially as this flies around, if it's on a smaller part of the image, you really want it to be evident. I'm really cranking things here to have this be evident. Because after this, I'm gonna head back to the edit page and just let this cache so we can uh, play through and see how we like it. This is cached, if I come back, we see we have this really bright flashes soaring through our scene. This is quite a bit uh, more than my original example, which I have over here. But that is like the beauty of an effect like this as well. You can tune this as much as you want. You can have it be big and bold or a little more restrained. I really like it in this scene as well, because as it flies around, it's like mapping onto this 3D geometry. So it sort of looks like a 3D effect. I'm gonna hop back into our example and show off one other thing real quick. I'm gonna disconnect this mask, which will get crazy real quick. Turn off the color corrector and coming out of that, I'm going to create just a transform node. Now I'm gonna pull up the scale on this. And then when I reconnect the mask from the wand, we'll start to get some interesting things. As this flies around our scene, 
you start getting this like ghostly, like double image where parts of the scene, you're seeing the scaled up version, but the rest of the time you're not. So I'm back here on the edit page and instead of bright colors, we have this really funky, this is sort of like nightmarish, like alternate reality. This is cool. And of course you could partner this up. Let me dive back in. I'm gonna come color corrector. I'm gonna click this button to reset the color corrector, reconnect another copy of the mask, turn it on. And I'm just going to pull down the saturation and the gain a bit. And then back on the edit page, we'll get those flashes, but they'll be kind of like dark and shadowy and a little more like, I don't know, weird. <laughs> All right, this is no longer a glitch effect. It's a nightmare alternate reality effect. <laughs> All right, as you can see, this is pretty powerful and it's easy to mix up something like this. With the wand node, you are just creating mask data, which can be used in any number of crazy ways inside Fusion. And it's by mixing and matching all of these techniques, bringing in like the perturb and shake modifier as well, that you end up with truly unique effects. But that's all I wanted to show you today. I hope you liked it. This is a cool little effect I've shown off on stream before, but not in its own video. So I thought it was time. More videos like this in the works. So stick around. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.